What I'm gonna do in this video is show you that how to use a free app on your mobile phone combined with a free spreadsheet that we've put together for you to evaluate and measure exactly how much light intensity you have in your home and then use that information to determine what is viable for your space in terms of plant growth. Guys, my name's Nate, I'm from Urban Leaf, where we specialize in making indoor edible gardening easy and accessible. If you'd like to learn more about grow lights or just how to grow food indoors, then make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. Now, the best source of light that you are ever going to find is the natural kind. Natural light is free, and it's also incredibly high quality. The problem with natural light, however, is it can be very, very unreliable and inconsistent. So between morning and afternoon, it can obviously come and go and vary in terms of its in intensity. Um, also, if you have a cloudy day, that can reduce the intensity of natural light by as much as 75%. So what we're going to do in this video is walk you through the process of building a light map for your home. What we'll do is we'll get a map or plan of your living space. We're going to figure out exactly how much light intensity you have at various locations throughout your house. And we're going to use that information to figure out what types of plants, ideally edible plants, that you could viably grow in your home. Now, before we dive in, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this video is only about 10 minutes long, um, but the exercise I'm describing uh, is going to take the best part of a day. So it's a good thing to try and do either on the weekend or maybe one day when you're working from home. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is that you ideally want to do this on an average day for your area in terms of cloud cover. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, clouds can reduce natural light intensity by as much as 75%. If you want to learn more about that, I've got a link below. Um, but if you're not interested in the detail, that's fine. Just trust me. Um, this, the results and this whole project is going to be much, much better if you can try to find a day that is kind of average or typical for your area in terms of the amounts of cloud cover. The second thing to mention is there are a couple of tools that you're going to uh, need to do this exercise. Uh, the first one is a light measuring app. Uh, I actually have one on my phone here called Light Meter. Uh, it's free. Uh, there is a paid version as, as well, but I just use the free version. Um, so make sure you get one of them. Um, don't worry if you don't have this exact app. There's plenty of others out there and they're all pretty similar. Um, the second thing that uh, I wanted to mention here is that you're going to need our online uh, spreadsheet or calculator. This thing's totally free. Um, and again, I've linked that below in the description. Uh, but make sure you have access to both of those tools because we're going to be using them throughout the day uh, in order to complete this exercise. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so the first step here is to determine the measuring points that we're gonna be using throughout the day. I'm gonna use points A, B, and C in this example to mark the three measuring points I'm gonna use. When you're coming up with your own, there's two things that I would recommend you keep in mind. Uh, number one, make sure you choose potentially viable locations for your plants. Like, don't go measuring light in front of the TV because that's probably not a very practical place to put your plants. Uh, number two, I'd recommend that you choose locations that are at least a few feet apart from each other. Um, light doesn't vary that much over you know, short distances of a foot or two. Um, so you're gonna get much more interesting and useful data, I think, if you choose uh, measuring points that are kind of in the corners or at least uh, a fair way apart from each other in your room. Okay, so step two is let's go and start measuring. Now, I would recommend you try to begin this exercise kind of first thing in the morning. And what you wanna do every time you're taking a set of measurements is basically uh, walk around to each of your three or four locations, A, B, and C here. You're gonna pull out the app and you're going to measure the light intensity in lux. 
The app I use has both Lux and Foot Candles or FC. Make sure you're using Lux because that's how we've kind of built the spreadsheet uh, for inputting these values. You're recording Lux. Um, the other little trick is make sure you know whether you're using the front or back camera on your phone. Uh, most of these apps give you the ability to use either. If you have a choice, like use the back camera, it's probably a little bit more accurate, but just make sure you have that right and you're pointing the camera in the right direction. So basically what you want to do every time is take your light measurements and note down the time. As soon as you're done, you want to set an alarm or a timer on your phone to come back in an hour or two's time and do the same exercise again. So when we come back, uh, we're going to go around the room again. We're going to take more light measure measurements at each location and we'll put in the time. Um, and this time is entered in 24 hour units, by the way. So 1 p.m. would be 1300 hours, for example. So anyway, you basically just go down the spreadsheet and uh, fill in new values every couple of hours. And you want to keep going with that exercise until sunset or when it's starting to get pretty dark. Now what you can see in the example that I've got on the screen is that at point A, I have a DLI of about five micromoles per meter squared per day. This is plenty of light for decorative house plants, but it's honestly a little bit on the low side for edible plants such as the ones I've got growing from the bottle gardens here. They might be okay with that amount of light during winter, but the truth is they'd probably prefer to have a bit more light than that. So ideally what I think I'd want to do here is move these bottle garden kits with the edible plants, probably move them either towards the window um, where it looks a bit brighter or underneath a grow light. At point B, we're right up near the window and this seems to be the sunniest place in the whole apartment. Because this window faces west, you'll also notice that the DLI uh, really didn't start increasing that much until around lunchtime. This is probably where I'd want to put my highlight plants or highlight requiring plants such as tomatoes or peppers. They'd be great candidates for going on the windowsill here. Um, finally, at point C, the natural light intensity is less than one. Now, this would be okay if I was growing something like microgreens, uh, these little guys here. Um, these guys don't have super high light requirements and that's, oh, sorry, there's dripping water on myself there. But that's one of the reasons that why uh, we recommend microgreens for beginners because they don't need a lot of light. Um, but yeah, I definitely couldn't grow any other herbs here and there's no way that I could grow uh, fruiting and flowering plants over at location C here unless I was to invest in a grow light. But certainly a DLI of one is nowhere near adequate for most edible plants except for something like microgreens. Okay, so what I've done in this video, um, I've given you just a few data points to think about in terms of light intensities. Uh, I realized that this was not an extensive list. If however, you would like to see a longer list of different plants and their light intensity requirements, then check out the description below. Uh, we have a link down there to a blog where we have all sorts of plants listed out and you can look up whatever it is that you're wanting to grow. Um, so that's a great thing to do once you've got your light map. You can see how much light you have at different locations. You can then look down the list and figure out what is going to be viable uh, in each of the various locations that you have. Okay guys, that is the end of the exercise here. I do hope you found this video useful. Uh, again, my name's Nate, I'm from Urban Leaf. Um, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about gardening plants and growing food at home, uh, then there's a few things I'd recommend. Um, number one, you might wanna to subscribe to this channel. Uh, we have a bunch more uh, content and videos like this coming out in the next little while. Uh, the second thing you might wanna do is head on over to our website. Uh, there's a ton more information and free resources there all about gardening and growing food at home. Uh, the third and final thing you might want to do is um, check out our Facebook group. It's called Indoor Edible Gardening. Um, it's a great place just to connect with other like-minded people, ask questions, get a bit of in inspiration and uh, yeah, just see what others are up to. Anyway guys, um, that's it for today. I hope you found this useful and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.